Hello, my name is Amanda Hill from the Archives Association of Ontario. In this short video, aimed at new users of Archives, I'll be explaining why you might want to use Archives and what you need to know before you turn up at an Archives for the first time. Why might you want to visit Archives? Well, to begin with, it's important to remember that a lot of historical materials are not available on the internet yet. Staff in libraries, archives and museums have a lot of knowledge about their areas of expertise and can help you find out where you need to be looking to discover more about the topics which interest you. If you've run up against a dead end in research online, you may well find information in archives which can help you get past that. This list summarises some of the resources you can find in archives and libraries which may not yet be available online. Archives can seem a little intimidating when you're a first-time user and in this next section I'll share some tips with you about how to make the most of your visit. First of all, find out what you can about the archives from their website. This should explain what the archives holds in general terms and what you need to do in order to get access to their materials. Some smaller archives have limited opening hours and you want to be sure that you arrive on a day when they're open to the public. It's often a good idea to let the archives know that you're coming so that they know what you're interested in and can get materials ready for you in advance. Check the location of the archives and plan how you're going to get there. Larger archives might have a cafe on site but if not you might want to check and see whether you need to bring your own food or if there is somewhere nearby where you can buy lunch or a coffee. Some archives require you to make an appointment while others store materials off-site and might need advance warning in order to retrieve them for you. Also be aware that some archives charge an entrance fee for members of the public. When it comes to using archives, remember that by their nature archives are unique and need careful handling. As a result, you'll find that security procedures are often more strict than they would be in a library of printed materials. You might need to put your bag in a locker. You'll be asked to use a pencil rather than a pen, and usually someone will be watching you when you're looking at the archives. Food and drink are not allowed near archival materials, and you won't be able to browse archive shelves like you would library ones. Most archives will have guides to their records, often called finding aids. Sometimes these are made available online. You might need to fill in a request form for the materials you're interested in, and some archives deliver boxes or volumes at set times during the day. If materials are heavily used, like newspapers, census or birth, marriage and death records, you might find them available on self-service reels of microfilm, and you can look through them on a microfilm reader. Remember that the best finding aid is often the archivists themselves. Make the most of their local expert knowledge. If you have a lot of material to look at, it can be difficult to keep track of what you've seen and easy to forget where you read something. So it's important to keep a note of what you've looked at, even if it wasn't useful. That way you avoid having to look at things twice. If you can use a digital camera to record what you've looked at, that can help. Policies on the use of digital cameras vary, but increasingly archives are allowing their use. Don't use the flash and make sure you can read the image before you move on to the next page. Taking a picture of the document's reference number or title can help identify it later. Remember to take a spare battery or charger. When you get home, it helps if you can organise your photos by date, archive or collection while the visit is still fresh in your mind. This will help you find the images again later. And of course, be sure to back up your images in more than one place. If you can't take photos, you should be able to order photocopies, although you might have to have them sent on to you after your visit. There may be restrictions on what you can do with the images because of copyright laws, but copying items for personal research is permitted under the definition of fair dealing in Canada, even if materials are still in copyright. Some archival collections may have restrictions on them for reasons of privacy or sensitivity, 
or because they are too fragile to handle. Remember that the records that have survived to the present day are just a fraction of all the records that have ever been created. It's expensive to keep materials for the long term and not all records can be kept. In modern governments only about 5% of the records produced are eventually transferred to their archives. A large part of an archivist's job is to decide what will be kept and what will be destroyed. Archivists need to be ruthless. For any particular archive, a collecting policy is an important document. This determines what that institution will keep. And it may be geographically based or subject based or based on the records of a single organisation. You'll find archives in many different organisations as well as in, as in institutions with the word archives in the name. Information professionals like archivists and librarians can help you determine possible sources and locations for records on a specific topic. The internet is a good starting point for research of all types. You'll find that archivists have often made information about their resources available online, but it's safe to say that none of them have all of their holdings digitised and available through the internet. Websites of individual archives are a good place to start, but if you're unsure which archives to visit in the first place, one of the archive network sites might be worth looking at. In Ontario, the shared archival network is called Archeon, which is provided by the Archives Association of Ontario, and there is an equivalent site for each of the Canadian provinces. In these sites, information about archive holding institutions is brought together, and the institutions can share details of their archival holdings. There's a separate video in this series about Archeon, which explains more about the service. To summarise, archives have rich materials which can shed light on a wide range of topics. Most archival collections are not available online and it has been estimated that at current rates it would take over 300 years to digitise all of the holdings in Library and Archives Canada. Online resources are a great place to start your research, but remember that archivists have a lot of inside information and love to share that with users of their collections make the most of their expertise. This is one of a series of videos for archivists and archives users funded by the Government of Ontario. Thanks for watching.